what's up guys so in this video i'm going to be installing my upgraded fuel pressure return valve i went with a 165 bar valve so i have my intake manifold off right in front of me i just installed the apr runner flap delete kit in my last video so now on the underside of the manifold we have the fuel rail right here each of the little uh ports for the fuel injectors right here we have uh, the lines that come from the fuel pump, the high pressure fuel pump. This hard line is the high pressure fuel out that comes out of the high pressure fuel pump into the rail right there. The return line to the fuel pump is right here. So that one goes right here. So this is the one that's actually relieving pressure off the fuel rail. If the pressure exceeds the uh, whatever pressure the valve is rated to, that's when the valve will open and it'll relieve pressure back to the fuel pump, so it returns to the fuel pump. So therefore, this is my valve. And well, that checks out because that's what my new one looks like. So let's try to get this one off. Uh, it looks like you need to crack this guy. And then after that, you can remove the valve. So let's crack that. So I have um, some brake line wrenches that won't damage the brass on that. See if it's the 15. Well, it might be, but I can't get the wrench over top of it. Well, this is the one I need to do first anyway, and that is really loose. So maybe that's a 13. No, it's a 14. Okay, well, that guy's a 14. Let's see if we can break that loose. Yeah, it broke loose without too much trouble. And now let's try to get the rest of that. Oh, see, I think the issue is that my wrench is hitting this arm right here, or this line right here. So what I might have to do is undo this little screw right here to move this out of the way. I'm not sure what this is. Let's see, this is coming. That might be my uh, EVAP going back into the intake manifold. It's probably what that is. Okay, yeah, so I'm gonna try to get this guy out of the way. I'm just gonna undo that one. Okay, so it doesn't move a lot, but that's still enough room for me to get a wrench on there. So let's do that now. I'm gonna need both hands to do this, so I'm gonna have to put the camera down. Okay, so I broke that loose. There was actually a lot more force on that than there was on the uh, this bottom piece. This is not gonna wanna back out with this pushing up against it. So, not sure how I'm gonna get that out of the way. Okay, I might, looks like it moves a lot. I can maybe just bend it like that. Maybe I can hold it out of the way. Okay, do not just try to bend this out of the way. Instead, what you can do is slide this down because this is basically just clamping down, holding this in place. So you can basically pull from this side just pull this to the left and that'll just slide this whole line through this little clamp. And now this is all the way over here. It started out over here and I pulled it to the left over to here. By doing that and then just very gently going like this and prying on this like that, just moving it that extra little bit, I was able to completely get that out by hand. Just you know, just hand threading this out. So I have the OEM one out. Forget what this one's rated to. It's maybe like 135 bar. Can't remember. The APR one is probably the most popular choice. That's at 155. I wanted a little bit more than that. So I went with the 165. And the highest that I saw available was 175. But that was like another 80 bucks or something like that. So I decided not to get that one. But... Hopefully I don't regret that because who knows, maybe the 165 isn't enough. I don't know. I probably should have just went with the 175, but we're here now. Yeah, we're going to see how this goes. So again, I'm going to have to put the camera down so I can kind of gently pry on that line so that I can hand thread this guy in. Now, if you flip this over, look at the top side. This is that line that we just connected that clamp on. There's also a T30 up here. So if you remove this, 
guy moves around a fair amount. So I believe the OEM torque spec for this is 30 newton meters. I have no way of getting a socket on here, so I'm just gonna do this by hand. So 20, 30 newton meters is about 22 foot pounds. This is probably like six inches where I'm grabbing it. So if I could pull this with about 40, 44 pounds, then that'll be it. But you gotta be careful with these brass fittings. They are fragile and even doing that much is a little bit scary to me. So um, I'm just gonna snug this up to, to what I feel is the right amount and then I'm gonna just call it a day from there. Okay, I found a good spot that I feel comfortable stopping at. That is as far as I'm gonna go. Now I'm going to slide this back into place and just reverse everything, put everything back the way it, the way it was. Okay, so I got that slid back in place. I got that tightened up, got that back on, got that guy back on, and I got a new gasket right there. I'm not gonna put this new gasket on yet because I'm afraid it's gonna fall out from gravity and then I'm gonna lose it. So put that on later, but for everything else, this is ready to go. Got my injector clips over here. Got the 3D printed one right there. 